materialism of the, the, the god of fertility, the cruel heathen uh, belief which, which brought them to, to, to uh, burn their children. For, for, you know, they burned their children in the fire and they, they, the worship was with, with priestesses, etc., etc. And there were idols upon idols and, and Baal and Asherah, etc. On one hand, and one God who has no picture, whom you cannot see. And he doesn't give you. He takes from you. He demands from you many things. So this was not easy for the people of Israel to decide. So this was a cultural war which found its embodiment on the Mount Carmel in this incident. And we have a cultural war now, and I shall show you what our camp says. The last sentences of Amos. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, says Lord thy God. Now what do you say? What, what did 300,000 Jews decide to do? To go and fulfill this. What is the thing which, which gives us, which uplifts us? That something was, was said and written 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. And we waited now 2,000 years in diaspora, and now it is being fulfilled. And for me, it is the, the fulfillment of my life that I had a hand in, build, in planting trees and building a house where Amos and Isaiah and Ezekiel said, and to fulfill the prophecies, those prophecies, this is something like a finger of God. Because there is no part to it. There is not no sec there is no example in human history that such a thing happened. That a people was absent for two thousand years and returned by the world. So this is really an experience. You are, one is privileged to be part of it. Now imagine that in the same generation, in the same land, somebody takes upon himself, and he is at the government of Israel, to turn this prophecy into a lie. And to, to do what he has written, I will not destroy what is being built now, will not be uprooted. And he sends the Israeli army to destroy and to uproot. So this is really not only a struggle over land. It is a cultural struggle. It is a culture and a counterculture. The same manner as with Elijah on the Mount of Carmel. And again, what, what, what is it that killed 159 of our uh, citizens and our children, etc.? It was fire. And why do we need this fire? Because we, we don't want to understand. We don't want to see. We, we are not able to believe. And now I shall uh, only read to you what, what, what witnesses say about that. And with this, I shall finish. The man who was at the head of the evacuation of the Jews a year ago, the expulsion of the Jews, is a general, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a Jewish general. His name is General Gershon HaKohen. And he made a visit 
to a high officer who was killed in Lebanon now, one of our best, in, the, in one of our very chosen unit, and uh, one of the, 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 the deputy commander of this unit, one of the best soldiers we ever had. And he visited in the morning in the house uh, of, uh, uh, to give his condolences, and he said the following. The disengagement, they call it disengagement, the expulsion a year ago from Gaza, the disengagement was a crime. And I was a part of a felony against the Jewish people. He, he admitted to that a few days ago. Now, the former chief of staff, Lieutenant General Moshe Ya'alon, he said the following. There is no doubt that the disengagement failed. What we had was a disengagement from reality and a disengagement from the truth. And he went on to say, one moment, please. The disengagement was a cardinal strategic error. It led to the victory of Hamas. The victory of Hamas, which you saw here, was a direct result of the expulsion, of the voluntary expulsion of the Jews. It provided, I continue with the former chief of staff, it provided a tailwind for terrorism. It nourished the Palestinian struggle for years to come. It gave the Iranians and the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda the feeling that Israel can be defeated, that Israel really is a spider web society as Nasrallah claims, or a rotten tree as Ahmadinejad claims. Thus, the disengagement did severe damage to Israel. It also damaged the United States regional strategy of the war against terrorism. Now, he said this, please keep in mind, he said this on the 7th of July, five days before the war, in, before the war in Lebanon broke out. Now, listen to this. Like a prophet, he said, now we are in the southern Lebanon scenario in the Gaza Strip. A great deal of weaponry has entered Gaza since the Jews left. Standard issue explosives have entered, Katyushas have entered, anti-aircraft missiles, anti-tank missiles, Grad missiles. As a result of this engagement, there are in, in Gaza Hezbollah agents, Al-Qaeda agents, Iranian terrorist agents. There is Iranian know-how, it's Iranian money. Just as I warned, the Gaza Strip is turning into Hamastan, Hezbollahstan, al qaedistan because the Jews were taken out from there. And he says, we will find ourselves facing a kingdom of terror that is capable in Gaza, that is capable of launching into Israel more rockets at a greater range and greater effectiveness. The rocket threat will reach Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ashdod and deep into the Negev. The advocates of the disengagement claim it would bring us international support, but the international credit we received was limited and temporary, and it has already run out. The advocates of disengagement claimed it would improve our security situation. Our, our overall security situation has worsened in the wake of the disengagement etc., etc. And he says, we inserted permission to fire Qassam Sejderot. Firing is also permissible from Lebanon into the Galilee, five days before it began. One of the reasons the majority of the Israeli public supported the disengagement was that it was blinded and dazzled and drugged, and also because the public has a true desire to be freed 
from the burden of the conflict and to divide the land. But we have to understand that even when we try to get the Palestinians off our back, they do not get off our back. They stab us. And whoever projects weakness in the Middle East is like a weak animal in the wild. It is attacked. It is not left alone. Therefore, if we now try to continue the failed disengagement with the convergence, convergence they call the, dis the expulsion of 100,000 Jews, the result will be grave. We will give terrorism a terrible tailwind. We'll provide a tailwind for radical Islam across the region. We will create a strategic threat to Jerusalem and Ben Gurion Airport population centers on the coastal plain. The Kassams and Katyushas will no longer be Sderot's problem. They will reach the front door of Tel Aviv. Now, uh, I want to quote what our prime minister said in New York a few months ago, before the war. There was a rally of peace uh, now people, of uh, his, uh, his crowd of, uh, you know, of the worshippers of the Baal peace. And he said the following, word by word, we are tired of fighting. We are tired of being brave. We are tired of winning. We are tired of defeating our enemies. This is what he said. And this is how the war, during those 35 days, how the war, this is how the war went. He didn't, he didn't let the army fight. T tens of thousands, whole divisions, four or five divisions were mobilized. And when they returned now, they said, we did nothing. We did not shoot one round. They kept us waiting for two weeks. And in the end, in the last day, we got four different orders to go back and forth, back and forth. In the end, we did nothing. So the, the so-called victory of Hezbollah was given them gratuitously by a man who said, we do not, what I read to you, and I shall now, I think, repeat and say it in the name of all of us. We are not tired of fighting. We are not tired of being brave. We are not tired of winning. And we are not tired of defeating our enemies, which are the enemies of mankind, as you, as you have seen it. And if there is, let us hope, and if this is a showdown, like the showdown on the Mount of Carmel, in the end, the people of Israel will understand that the Baal and the false peace, the false God peace, is not their God. And they will say, as the people of Israel on the Mount Carmel, our Lord, the God, he is the God. 